What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Universal Mastery, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now, if you're new, what I do here is I break down the occult sciences and I break them down to a very practical degree so that you can simply use them and apply them in your day to day life and get real, actual results with what it is that I am teaching here. Okay? Once again, if you're new, let me give you a little bit of a perspective on who you're getting this information from because that's obviously important whenever you're learning. Okay? My name is Jeremiah Schwartz. I am a professional occultist. I'm fully initiated in the entirety of the Kabbalistic tree. I'm studied when it comes to the 22 major arcana of the tarot deck directly associated with that same tree. And I'm also studied when it comes to planetary energies in alignment with astrology. Okay? So, with that being said, what is the topic of our today's video? So, this is actually something that was asked by one of my viewers. Okay, I recently saw this on one of the uh, comments within my YouTube video. And the question, and this is also the topic, the question that was asked by this person is, basically, what is your lineage and who initiated you into the occult field? Okay, so what I'm going to be doing within this YouTube video is giving you essentially a more clear perspective on who I am in regards to maybe a little bit of my lineage, not in too much depth, but also sharing how I got professionally initiated into the occult field myself and how I did it, how I approached it, how it happened, and some of the process that you have to go through in order to be considered an initiated occultist or a professional occultist. Okay, so if this is something that you're interested in learning, which obviously will also give value to the listener, then this is your video, so stay tuned. Okay, so let's start here. So let's start with understanding some general ideas that are within the occult field that I think a lot of people have that is not always 100% set in stone and true for everyone, okay? So we're going to start with the ancestral lineage. Does this have importance in regards to how powerful and how professional an occultist is and can be. Absolutely, it has connections, 110%. Your ancestral lineage is directly connected and associated with your ability to have psychic capability and power because if you come from a lineage of powerful occultists, magicians, shamans, you know, spiritual practitioners, that energetic sequence and code gets passed through the bloodline of that lineage. So that means you coming into this life are basically a pre-packaged energetic being ready, willing, and able to make psychic occult progress in the field, okay? So this is what I want to make clear. It is very powerful and important in direct association with your psychic capabilities and your psychic potential connected to your bloodline and your lineage. Okay, this is important. This is very real. This is very true. But does that mean, for those of you that are listening, oh, well, what if I don't come from a lineage that was, you know, full of occult practitioners? What if I don't come from a lineage that was already essentially powerful in regards to psychic capabilities? What if I came from basically a lineage that was sort of normal? Does that mean 
that I am that I am unable to develop psychic capability and psychic power? And the answer is absolutely not. Because no matter what your bloodline or what your ancestry or what your lineage is, at some point in time, somebody within that lineage was the breakaway moment for how that lineage developed its power and how your bloodline gained its power, which means they created something from nothing. Okay. And this is the case with every human species on the planet. The reality is, is very few and slim understand that and take action in regards to developing themselves using the occult sciences. Therefore, in the occult field today, in the spiritual field today, the most powerful people tend to be the ones that were already uh, pre-established through their bloodlines and their ancestry and their lineage. This is the majority of the powerful occultists you see in our today's time. But that doesn't mean that if you don't have a pre-packaged lineage, energetically speaking, if you don't have a powerful lineage, that does not mean you do not have potential to create something from the nothing, okay? Once again, the reality is, is most of the powerful occultists you see in the field today do come from these types of lineages. And it makes sense. It makes sense. If you come from an already energetically pre-established bloodline or lineage, then when you're born, you are going to carry that within your genetic code, therefore have an extra affinity towards those types of things over the person who doesn't have that carried into their genetic code, carried into their bloodline. But once again, are there people who create their lineages? Are there people listening to this or are there people right now in the real world who are creating their lineage right now? They are literally the founders of their ancestry getting into spiritual sciences, occult sciences, and initiatory practices. Is that a thing and is that happening right now? Absolutely. Is there a lot of people doing this? Absolutely not. But they're out there and it, it can be done. I mean, if you think about it, I mean, if you just look at it from a, you know an evolutionary perspective, every single person came from nothing, okay? Trace the lineage back as far as you can go and you're going to come up to one person, okay? Or maybe two people that started the lineage that started creating a powerful ancestry or a powerful bloodline. They came from the nothing, okay? All of the power comes from the unconscious and the subconscious, and that means anyone can tap into it, okay? Once again, there are very few that do. The majority of those few come from the ancestries that have already embraced the initiations in the path. This is a reality, but once again, I'm sharing the two polarities of the more micro or excuse me the more macroscopic truth here okay just so you can have some awareness of what's really going on so when it comes to my personal bloodline and my personal lineage i have a powerful bloodline me personally it branches off in many different directions i'll give a few it branches off in african directions it branches off in finnish polish German, and many more different directions. This is just a few, okay? And I have, I've tested my ancestry and everything. I've, you know, gone through uh, the process, scientifically speaking, to locate my lineage. And I've done that, okay? So I know it branches off in many different directions. And I'm just sharing a few here, okay? There's many more. And every one of these different lineages that I just mentioned, out of the few of many more, there are different per percentages for each of them, okay? So right off the bat, when you look at your own ancestry and you look at your own lineage, oftentimes when, you're, when your own bloodline branches off in many different directions, that's usually a tell, that's usually a sign that you are a powerful person because you're linked energetically into many different bloodlines. You're linked into many different cultures, different societies, and once again, different genetic codes that come with those cultures, with those societies, okay, with those groups of people, okay? So that's the case for myself. I have a very wide 
lineage. Okay. Now in my immediate reality, when it comes to my parents, my parents are not necessarily the most psychic, the most psychically developed human beings on the planet. Neither are my grandparents, neither are their grandparents. They are general in regards to their spiritual beliefs, yet both of my parents have pretty widespread bloodlines themselves. That's why myself, my bloodline and ancestorship traces back to so many different directions. It goes so many different directions. And both of my parents share that same quality. Their ancestorship goes in many different directions when it comes to my father and even when it comes to my mother. That's why I, being their son, have so many different branches out in regards to my ancestorship and my lineage and all these other types of uh, things. So my parents personally are psychically gifted naturally because of their ancestor lineup, their ancestry lineup going in many different directions, okay? Does this mean they're the most powerful psychics on the planet and they're fully embracing their potential? Absolutely not. You know, the the baseline idea that most of my parents, excuse me, the baseline idea that my parents are coming from more so is traditional relig uh, traditional religious perspective. So my dad is a Christian. My mom's more so leaning towards Christian. But although they're leaning towards this generalized religious way of being, they are psychically gifted. They're spiritually gifted. So what, what I mean by this is when I look at my dad, he's got power. My dad lives a life that shows proof of his psychic capabilities, although he's just a Christian. Okay, he's psychically gifted, and I can attest to this. He controls his reality. He lives a very uh, nice lifestyle. Okay, he's not a pushover. And he has the physical proof that shows it, energetically speaking. Same with my mom. My mom, growing up with my mom, she's always been, you know, an extremely intuitive person. And I remember at a young age, her talking about things that she wanted to create. And I remember her creating vision boards. And I've literally seen her step into the exact lifestyle that was placed on her vision board. My own mother. Okay. And me and my mom have not always had the best relationship. Same with me and my dad. And there's definitely mistakes that they've made. My mom, my dad, there's mistakes that I've made that have led to us not having the best relationship. Now where I'm at in my life, I have a great relationship with both of them because I'm more independent in regards to myself, my own spirituality, my own psychic capabilities, my own awareness of psychology in general. And once again, the occult field, I do my own thing now. I'm creating my own empire. So I don't have to worry about other people in my life that much, just my own empire. And as I'm saying, my parents are psychically gifted. So that passed down to me. And because I have such a widespread ancestorship, such a widespread ancestry, bloodline lineage, for sure, there are people that are traced in my lineage that were very psychic, very spiritual. If you trace it back far enough, you'll see it probably connects back to many different cultures that I'm energetically associated with that were very powerful psychics, 110%. Okay? Now, once again, this carried on into me. So intuitively, unconsciously and subconsciously, I have a genetic code where I have a strong affinity towards the occult, towards the hidden, which is simply the unconscious and subconscious capability that I have and potential. So what this means is that when it came to my entering into deep level occult initiation, I didn't need an immediate person that I had to find or that I had to necessarily search and travel to, to have initiate me, okay? What I did to initiate myself is I set a very strong intention in regards to the occult field, okay? I knew intuitively 
from, you could say, more so of like a shamanistic perspective that me living my life at the time where I was before I was getting into deeper occult studies and practices, I knew I was not at my highest potential. I knew I was out of touch with my soul. I think that's the key word. And I was at a point in my life where I was so traumatized due to all the experiences I grew up with in my life and all the religious programming, all the different psychological programming. I come from a powerful family and that powerful family that I come from wasn't always the best family to be programmed by, meaning my family's powerful and they, my family has not always had the best intent for me in regards to the path that I chose to walk and what I'm truly here to do in regards to my soul's evolutionary journey. So I had to embrace you know, my own family and the power that comes behind my own family and break my own path to figure out who I am in regards to that indoctrination coming from my own family. And that was challenging and traumatizing growing up. So for example, I grew up with my dad telling me at a very young age, and he's a powerful guy and he's very serious, very convicted, very disciplined. I grew up with him telling me if I did not go to church on Sundays, I was going to burn in hell at you know one day in my life. I would burn in hell uh, when I pass away. And I was a young child being told this repetitively as I grew older. And this is just one little example of something that can traumatize somebody as they grow older. But thankfully, that dove me into spirituality at a very young age. I come from a very spiritual family. Once again, my family is not always correct in regards to the evolutionary process of true spirituality, but coming up into a religious upbringing, I was able to see a lot of aspects of spirituality that are key to be aware of that are not good for me. So I learned a lot of key concepts, key awarenesses from what not to do because of my religious upbringing, which really formed who I am. I mean, they say diamonds are formed under pressure, and it's true. Not everyone turns into a diamond. A lot of people get crushed, and then they get blown away in the wind because they can't handle that pressure. But if you can process that pressure, you can form into a diamond. And that's what I did, and that's what I always do. And I will always continue to do that. I'm, I'm extremely powerful, I must say. Now, in regards to how I got into initiation, once again, tying it full circle, I set a strong intent of getting to my highest potential and I was willing to die to get to that place. So what I mean by this is I was at a point in my life where I was so traumatized, so hurt, so full of pain that I was willing to die to get to my highest potential over then failing in that process, meaning I was willing to push it to that extreme limit to get to where I knew I was capable of getting rather than just giving up in settling for mediocrity, giving away my soul, giving away my intent. I was willing to die and I carried that in my energetic field. I literally carried that with me. I, it, this, is, this is what my perspective is and what it was. I would rather die than not to get to my highest soul's evolutionary potential. So I'm going to uh, approach this intention in this pathway intuitively under that scope that I am going to place myself in circumstances because I would rather die than not embrace what I need to embrace to get to my highest potential. And sure enough, having that powerful of an intent and actually meaning it, and when, I, when I'm telling you this, like, you know, you can hear me say these words, right? There's a lot of people that may say these types of words. I've come across many people in regards to my spiritual evolutionary path and my journey that have said many things, yet they didn't follow through, okay? I've dealt with many types of these people. I've seen many of these people fall and fail because they said words that they didn't actually mean. They didn't have enough behind them to actually get them to where they needed to be, but they said they wanted it. They said they were willing to do what it takes to get to their highest potential, yet 
when things got real, when things got heated, when things started putting pressure on the table, these same people let go and stopped embracing their evolutionary path. They, they, they didn't just let go, but they accepted defeat to the degree where it was permanent. And I'm all for accepting defeat in regards to sometimes you make mistakes and you accept the fact that you make mistakes and then you let go of the need to attach to those mistakes. And that's a form of accepting defeat in an honorable manner where you know you're learning something from the defeat. But then there's a difference between that and accepting the fact that your evolutionary purpose is too challenging, too emotionally, physically, mentally, and psychologically challenging for you to embrace. So therefore, you give up on even trying to get there because you know it's too challenging and you can't do it. That's a different type of defeat that leads to you losing your soul permanently because your soul is shelled. So if you just allow your soul to continuously be shelled, then you're going to live a life that produces results of a human being who has a shelled soul, which is going to produce a hellish reality. So I was somebody that was aware my soul was shelled and that in order to unshell my soul, I need to go to some very deep and dark places within my own unconscious, subconscious, and in the real world in correspondent with the actual multiverse to start to free up that shell, to get out of that shell and reabsorb my soul, okay? So my initiatory journey started with me recognizing how fucked I was, recognizing how dissatisfied I was and truly being honest with how much pain I was feeling. I mean, it was to the degree where I had to alter personality. I mean, I was not the same person I am speaking to you right now. Before I got into deeper level of cult initiations, I was hurt. Okay, I was full of pain. I was full of anger. And I know there's a lot of people that experience these emotions, but I'm just being honest when I tell you this, you know? I'm not here to say I felt more anger than you or I felt more pain than you. I'm just saying this is what I felt to push me in the direction that I went to a degree where I was rather willing to die than not do that. And it worked. So what I mean by this is I found myself taking risks that the average person would never take. Okay, When I say this, I mean risks that are beyond what most people would even consider. So for example, I left my hometown completely. I left all my closest friends that I, I grew up in a place for over 18 years. I left that entire place with the sole intention of starting over and being a new person as I start over. So I left everybody behind. All my closest friends left them behind. No, Basically no contact with any of them for over a year, just on a whim, like Instantly left, started a new life, went to schooling. At the time, I was going to personal training schooling. And what I found is that when I died to my old life, when I left my old childhood behind, when I left my hometown behind, it was literally ritualistic in nature. It was, uh, it was an initiation. And when I found myself moving to where it is that I moved and going to schooling specifically for personal training and nutrition to learn the science of the body, which is very occult in nature because everything is based on these scientific principles and how the body functions in regards to the physical body and also how energy outside of the physical body affects the physical body. So I, I learned a lot of these things. And as I was going to school, I realized I was in initiations, okay? What do I mean by that? I was in schooling unconsciously and subconsciously knowing I was initiating through something before I even knew about the entirety of initiation itself, before I knew consciously about the Kabbalistic tree. I didn't know anything about it. I didn't know anything about occult initiations 
to the degree where, you know, you study the Kabbalistic tree, you read occult literature, you look that there's, you know, you can look and see that there's actually an initiatory structured system based on the 22 pathways, based on the spheres and all this other stuff. Yet unconsciously, I knew I was initiating. Very strange, right? I just knew it. And I went through the whole schooling experience. And you could say that the teachers that I had, the students that I was interacting with, you could say that they were the initiators, okay? Every single person played a role, an initiatory role, yet I still didn't know about the process of initiation, but I'm going through these initiations in my real world, having taken the risks that I took that placed me in school surrounded by people that I've never met before, striving to accomplish something which was becoming a professional personal trainer, starting from scratch, starting a new life. Basically, what I was really doing was looking for my soul. But it all started with me diving into the unknown, taking a huge risk. Okay? So it was during schooling where I started to approach the occult field very consciously, and specifically the darker aspects of it, because my schooling, as I said, was a form of initiation. I was making very profound progress. Okay. I was diving into areas of myself that I've never dived into before to profound degrees throughout the entire process of schooling. And then, as I said, I started actually practicing certain types of occult practices similar to invocation, which was the practice and the art of summoning forces, summoning entities, summoning spirits. Okay, so I practice invocation, which the way that I look at it now is summoning an energy that you can pull into yourself that then creates physical experiences that you have to go through that transform you internally all being triggered by that invocation in the first place, which, you know, in its nutshell is alchemy. And this is what I did. I did invocations of certain entities that I felt intuitively I needed to invoke. I didn't know why, but I needed to. Very strange. Okay, but I was very intuitive about it. It's not like I'm reading a book. And then someone's telling me I need to necessarily do it this way and it's got to be done linearly just like this and this and this and this. I studied from different sources and then I listened to my own intuition to see what was best for me and then I followed that direction. Okay? So naturally, midway through going into schooling, as I was embracing the occult field for the first time very consciously, which is another, you know, that's another form of initiation because when, you, when you're living a life not embracing the occult sciences and occult practices, for example, like invocation, the first time you go to do an invocation, it is not easy to do. I mean, it's challenging. It tests you on a deep level, especially when you come from a pre-programmed uh, Christian upbringing. And, you know, it just happened to be that the aspect of the occult that I was embracing was the darker aspect. It was the demonic side. This is what I felt I needed to embrace. I couldn't tell you why, but intuitively, that's what I needed to do. A part of my unconscious and subconscious was already aware of what I needed to do to get to where I am now. And this process continues to go on as I move into my near and long-term future. It's like I'm already there in my future just telling myself, this is what I need to do to get to my highest potential over and over and over again. So as I said, I found myself doing these invocations specifically of the demonic. And this is where it got very real in regards to my initiations. Okay. I did invocation of Lucifer. Okay. Now the way that I view Lucifer is as a very initiatory type of force. And I, I obviously speak about this many times throughout my YouTube channel. Okay. Lucifer is this very unique 
interesting force that is actually very different than a lot of other forces that you will embrace and approach. And I'll tell you why. Okay, so here's why. So I think a lot of people hear the name Lucifer and hear the mention of Lucifer or even people that are in the darker side of the occult community. Um, talk about Lucifer oftentimes in a in a pretty high light. I think I think Lucifer's name is most oftentimes looked at in a way that is um, beneficial most of the times. Now, obviously, when it comes to the Christian perspective, Lucifer is a complete opposition to their God. But from in a you know a darker side of the occult perspective, from a you know universe B left hand path clipothic perspective, then Lucifer is you know very powerful because he represents the the force that went against God, the force that went against the evil entity that's trying to program our multiverse in an inverted format. So I think a lot of people have this perspective of Lucifer um, in regards to he's this demonic force, yet he's also considered the light bearer, okay, which is very unique. Like, I think a lot of people know intuitively that Lucifer is a unique spirit, a unique entity for sure. And for anyone that's an actual practitioner that's listening to this now and does invocation, if you've ever done an invocation of Lucifer, if you're listening to this now, you know that Lucifer is different than most of the other forces you invoke. There is a different quality to this entity that is known as Lucifer. And this is what always fascinated with, uh, fascinated me personally. I felt a very intuitive um, connection to Lucifer primarily because I realized this is the force that is very necessary to energetically embrace to make the progress that I'm intending to, to uh, make. And at the time, I couldn't explain what I'm about to explain to you now. I couldn't explain it at the time because it was all intuitive, unconscious, and subconscious to me. But come another three years in the future, here I am now, you know, running my YouTube channel. I have a successful YouTube channel that is continuing to grow, continuing to thrive. I have a very big Patreon community, which is also continuing to grow, continuing to thrive. Um, so I'm, you know, I'm I'm a living embodiment of success in this field, and it's only going to go up, and it continues to go up. Okay. So what I know now looking back in regards to this force of Lucifer is I recognize that Lucifer is in regards to the scientific principles of chaos. Lucifer would represent the hidden part of chaos, or you could say the hidden aspect of chaos that creates order. Okay. This is in direct correspondence to why we have Lucifer created by God being literally the most powerful angel under God, yet being the only angel that completely rebelled, went into the underworld, and then gained an army to fight against God. So if we look at it from the perspective of where it really is and what it's really showing, God is an aspect of chaos. God is dark energy in nature. And it's a specific aspect of chaos that is specifically intended to distract, specifically intended to invert awareness away from true primordial intentions and intuitions. Okay, so in a nutshell, what this means is the force of God behind the entire religion that essentially continuously establishes this force this entity as God. We can look at it from a couple perspectives. You have Jesus, you have Yahweh, you have the Holy Spirit. And this is what equates to God from the religious perspective, from the Christian perspective. Uh, from the Judaic perspective, they look at God as the Elohim, which essentially is the powerful ones or the, the almighty being, the supreme being, 
when in reality, this force, this specific structured force is actually meant to distract the human being away from their own unconscious and subconscious, which is the darker aspect of their nature. It's the chaos within the own human being. And the more you worship that force, God, the more the unconscious and subconscious get repressed and get sucked in so that the more you worship God and repress your own unconscious and subconscious, your own darkness, so to speak, the more your own unconscious and subconscious starts to destroy your own life. Therefore, the people that created the religion, the people that establish that religious belief of God that tries to distract the human species away from their true nature, those people get all the power, the wealth, the energy, and you could say the reputation because they can use the human species that worship God as cattle. They can use them psychically speaking. You can harm humans that are unaware of their true nature simply because they're unaware of their true nature and they're way more susceptible to subconscious and unconscious influences. That's why God says, stay away from dark energy. That's why God says, you know, and we can see this manifest within God speaking to Jesus, stay away from black magic, stay away from using destruction on your enemies, turn your cheek, pray for them, make sure they're better. You see this manifest and it, all this is doing is distracting through a religious program and then this entity as God, it's distracting for the people that follow that religion, those humans away from their true nature, away from their darker, destructive nature, which is a part of our primordial being, okay? And this is what it's all intended to do. So with Lucifer, this is why Lucifer is unique because Lucifer represents that hidden aspect of chaos that creates order. So Lucifer being the hidden aspect of chaos, which was created by God, descends into the underworld, but creates order from that chaos of the underworld, which from a evolutionary perspective is a, is a very powerful and important thing. This is why Lucifer is so well known to the most professional occultists who embrace initiatory practices in regards to the clipothic tree or in regards to universe B of the multiverse that we live in. The tunnels of set, the clipothic tree. You need to embrace Lucifer, which once again is an archetypal representative of the hidden aspect of chaos that creates order. Because when you go into those chaotic realms, dimensions, and areas within the multiverse, you need to create order within that chaos. So therefore, a force like Lucifer is absolutely essential. And there are other cultures that have different versions of this force, Lucifer, which truly in its root is from a scientific perspective, it's the hidden part of chaos that creates order. And if you look at the science of chaos, there is a hidden order within chaos. And that would be the force of Lucifer from more so of a today's time you could even say Kabbalistic perspective, we embrace that force of Lucifer as the hidden part of chaos that creates order. So this is why for me, I intuitively felt connected to invoke this force of Lucifer. And from doing that, a lot of things took place. It led to me making a contract with the hidden aspect of chaos that creates order, not to sell my soul, not to say, here's my soul, you know, give me all of this in return for my soul, but rather to get me to my highest evolutionary potential. And from doing so, I would spread the influence and awareness of Lucifer, which I am here in this moment doing right now. So Lucifer made this contract with me. He presented it to me. I 
intuitively received the information. So I, I drew out the contract and I said, you know what? I'm going to essentially make this contract with an aspect of the devil, which is very profound, very dangerous, and crossed a lot of boundaries for me because of my religious upbringing. So that there, there goes another initiation right there. But I made this contract with Lucifer, but also we can look at it as the hidden aspect of chaos that creates order under the scope of, I am ready and willing to do whatever it takes to get to my highest evolutionary potential, as well as understand this evolutionary process that I'm going through. This is also what I included within that contract. And I will once again do whatever it takes to get to that level of awareness and that level of power. And in return, I will spread, you know, if this works out the way that I'm intending it, I will spread your influence. I will spread your, essentially, technology and awareness of you, Lucifer, the hidden aspect of chaos that creates order. Because that naturally is what evolution needs. People need this information. There's not a lot of people out here like me that share this type of perspective, okay? So sure enough, I write this contract, it, you know, set it out in stone, burn it. Next thing you know, Lucifer starts telling, I start developing this very profound telepathic ability to communicate with Lucifer. I mean, it was profound. It was to the degree where it was like my intuition was being overran by Lucifer. But sure enough, he was telling me certain things that I needed to know certain things that were necessary for me to do to get myself to where I am right now. And a lot of those things revolved around undoing religious programming. So the first thing he told me was, I need to let go of Jesus. I need to let, because I always had a, an escape route, which was, you know, if, if this doesn't work out, you know, you know, I'll, I'll become a Christian, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll become a Christian again because I don't want to go to hell after I die. So therefore, let me make sure in the back of my mind, I always have this escape route for turning to Jesus under the scope of, you know, oops, I made some big mistakes. I invoked some demonic forces. Now I, I see the truth. I'm going back to Christianity and worshiping Jesus to then, you know, be ready for heaven in the afterworld. And Lucifer told me, if you want to make any further progress, you got to let go of that right now after making this contract. And that was prof that was that was a big deal for me. That was like profound. Very profound. So I said, you know, is this something I really have to like like it, how how necessary is it that I have to let go of this religious perspective that I have or this religious escape route? He said, you're not going to move forward if you don't I'm not, I'm not going to take you to where you're going to go if, if you don't let go of it. And that was one of the biggest things I need. That was like one of the biggest and most challenging things for me to do on my entire initiatory journey because I grew up my entire life basically connected to Jesus, thinking Jesus was the spiritual force that was guiding me when really it wasn't. It was my own astral body. It was my own being. And long story short, I, I dropped it. I let go of it. I made that choice. You know, once again, as I said, I was ready and willing and able to die rather than getting to my highest potential. And I was not going to live a lifestyle where I didn't get to my highest potential because I didn't step into the complete unknown. So after receiving that information, I accepted it and I said, you know what? I will let go of Jesus. I will, I'll let go of it. I will do things that will show that I am against that. So I started doing things that were actually um, mocking Christ. I was, Lucifer led me to doing things, basically showing me energetically that I was detaching from Christian programming, religious programming. Um, and that was a huge door opener. And then naturally it led to a, a couple other things that I'm not going to mention, but another intuition came to me that said, I need to move to South Beach, Miami, and I need to work at Equinox which has a very strong energetic link just in the name itself of Equinox, which actually acts as a initiatory doorway to step into deeper level initiations. And it just so happened to be right when I moved to Miami, which once again, a lot of people wouldn't do in the first place because 
I was by myself, never been to Miami before. My own family, my own friends, people that were in my immediate reality were telling me, don't move to Miami. You're not going to find affordable living. You're not going to find a roommate. Uh, getting a job at Equinox is going to be too challenging. Trust me. They've tried it. They, they, they knew people that have tried it and it didn't work out. And I went against all of that and was listening to my intuition. And I was being clearly led to go to South Beach, Miami. And I said, you know what? Fuck all of that other noise. I need to find my own intuition here. And I need to listen to that very intricately. So therefore, I stepped into that unknown once again. I went to South Beach, Miami. I stayed true to what I was going to do. And sure enough, everything fell into place exactly how I knew it was going to fall into place based on what my intuition was telling me. Everything, very supernaturally. I met a roommate at Equinox after having gotten a job at Equinox. When everyone told me it was almost impossible, yada, yada, it all supernaturally fell into place. And once again, my intuition was telling me, this is what will happen as you continue to listen to your soul's voice. I kept following it, and in the, the process, I'm in telepathic communication with Lucifer, the hidden aspect of chaos that creates order. And Lucifer is telling me certain things that I need to do to open up certain doorways to get me to where I need to be based on the contract I made with Lucifer. And obviously, Lucifer was willing to make this contract with me in the first place just before any of you listening to this think, oh, well, that's how you did it. That's how it works. I'm going to make a contract. No, it's based on my seriousness. My intent was real. Okay. I'm not some person who's living in a bedroom that decides I'm going to make a contract with Lucifer and then things are just going to start working out. I was ready, willing, and able to do what it was that was physically necessary to do to get to my highest potential because if not, I would rather die. And that's how serious I took it. That's why Lucifer actually told me we need to make a contract because we're going to set this in basically into the quantum wave function. We're going to set this into the multiverse so that you get to where you need to be. And it was necessary to make that contract. And once again, he presented it to me because of my real intent. I was, I was really willing to do it. And even you could say on an even deeper level, Lucifer knew I was going to do it. He knew I was going to be successful. And he was just giving me the steps that I already needed to do to get to that outcome that I, I was already technically at from a more occult, spiritual multiversal, multi-timeline perspective. Lucifer already knew I was going to do it successfully. A part of me already knew I was going to do it successfully. And I just needed to go through those steps to get there. And part of that step was approaching the hidden aspect of chaos that creates order and making a contract with it. And long story short, I end up moving to South Beach, Miami. I end up doing everything everyone said I couldn't do. And this is where my initiations really began because Lucifer showed me the clip off. I didn't know what the clip off was. I barely even knew what the tree of life was. But he showed me the clip off. He showed me the technology on how to open up those clip offic shells and how to travel through the clip offic tree to gain power from it. So, what this means from a, an occultist perspective, he showed me how to get to universe B of the clipothic tree, which is the backside of the clipothic tree. Okay. He showed me how to open up the shells of the clipoth and gain power from them, simultaneously getting in communication and contact with all of the demonic dark forces that most people completely are terrified and fear. Okay. And I'm going into this realm with a strong energetic association with the hidden aspect of chaos that creates order, approaching forces that are known to destroy cultures, societies, and human beings because of their level of chaos that is associated with them. Meaning these forces are well known to drive human beings completely out of their mind. But I'm approaching them from that evolutionary perspective. And because of that, 
I started gaining huge amounts of power from them, although they were manifesting some of the most challenging things I've ever been through in my entire life experience. Uh, I'm not that old. Okay, I'm 26 years old right now. So out of the time that I've been alive, the most challenging experiences I've ever been through were from those clipothic initiations. And that lasted around two solid years of clipothic initiation. And then there was a whole nother year of an additional initi initiation, you could say. I'm not going to go into depth about that. So in total, the initiatory process was about three years long. And within those three years, about two of them, I had nothing. I was ripped away from everything. I lived in South Beach, Miami. The job that I had taken away from me. I had to work somewhere else. Taken away from me. I had to work somewhere else. It was a process of complete death, complete loss of se uh, complete loss of self importance, complete loss of who I thought I was, and who I even thought I was becoming. To really understand my soul, to really understand what was under this layer of consciousness and going so deep into that that I became one with the unconscious and the subconscious. I became one with, you could say, the black dragon, the dark mother, the source of chaos itself from its evolutionary perspective. It felt like I was nothing. It felt like I had no identity. It felt like I had no power. It felt like I had no finance, yet everything was still manifesting around me perfectly to make sure I was going through initiatory experiences. It was so supernatural. The entire process was supernatural experience after supernatural experience that to this day, there are not words I can explain to you that define that process. Only someone that goes through it can understand it. And it was a physical process. As much as it was spiritual, as much as it was an astral experience, an interdimensional experience, it was also physical. I went through the physical alchemy going through those initiations. And it all triggered from when I learned the practice of invocation back when I was going to school. And even before that, it all triggered when I left my hometown. I died to everything in my past and stepped into a new beginning. Then in that new beginning, I learned some occult practices. And then from there, a whole bunch of other initiatory steps unfolded from communication with this force known as Lucifer, which once again has different names in different cultures. Lucifer is not just the one and only Lucifer. There are other names for Lucifer within different cultures because the hidden aspect of chaos that creates order is a scientific principle that can have different names associated with that principle. Lucifer is a powerful name to associate with it, but there are other names as well. So just because you've never embraced or approached Lucifer, if you're from a different tradition or a different pantheon or a different culture, doesn't mean that you've embraced or you continuously embrace that hidden aspect of chaos that creates order. Because it may just be under the guise of a different name than what I'm saying here. Okay? So long story short, my initiatory journey unfolded from learning how to truly be an occultist and communicate with entities, communicate with pre-established energetic forces that then acted as initiators, door openers, gate openers for me throughout the process while maintaining my own awareness of my own soul, meaning I didn't fall into the trap of worshiping spirits. I didn't fall into the trap of giving my soul away to another external entity thinking that I'm going to get fortune in return. I knew the entire initiatory process was painful. I, I intuitively knew this. I knew it was going to be painful, but I knew that as I was getting ripped apart energetically, psychically, emotionally, spiritually, and physically, I knew I was getting more powerful as I regenerated after getting ripped apart. And part of the reason why I'm so aware of this is because one, before all of that, all of my studies on the occult and stuff in that nature... I was a little bit studied in psychology, so I kind of understood how the mind worked, and I come from a fitness background. 
So I understand how the body works. When you break down muscle, it can rebuild and get stronger. You can get more powerful. And the same thing manifests energetically. I knew the process was excruciating. And when you hear the, the term, the black diamond, I mean, think about it. Diamonds are formed under pressure. The entire process of real deep occult initiation is to become the black diamond in association with your energetic field and your conscious awareness. To become the black diamond, you have to go under the pressure to form the diamond. And this is what I embraced. This is what I went through. And it's, I, I went to the source of entities. I went to the source of these initiators from different cultures, whatever different culture that these forces were associated with, they have, these forces have power to open up doorways for your energy field to enter into. I mean, as I just said, these forces come from different cultures, okay? Lucifer, a whole culture behind Lucifer. Belial, a whole culture behind Belial. Belzebub, whole culture behind Belzebub. Lilith whole culture behind Lilith. And the list goes on and on and on. So you're establishing connection with these entities that carry this energetic resonance of their entire culture behind it. They're, they're, they're powerful entities that once again can open, they can act as keys to open energetic doorways. Yet, just because I'm saying it in the way that I'm saying it does not mean it's easy to get into those doorways or that it's easy to receive the key. You have to go through the pressure and the pain to get the key to open the door. And I don't care if anyone listening to this wants to disagree with that. Oh no, I found the cheat code. I can do it without, without having to go through the initiation. Trust me, it's all in your head. It's all your perspective on the mythology and the pantheons. You don't have to go through initiation. You can just, you know, get all the archetypal energies and then you're um, a God beating, a God being automatically. I'm telling you right now, if you don't go through the physical initiation, then you're not getting the physical alchemy to take place in your physical energy field. It all starts in your physical body. Okay. Then that affects your physical energy field. And that's what makes you a real professional and powerful occultist. Anyone can argue with me at the end of the day, and I'm not here to change your mind. Okay. I don't care if you believe what it is that I'm saying, but I'm telling you, this is what it is. Okay. You can sit in your room all day long, conjuring all the different archetypes you want, but if you're not psychologically trained to know how to go through physical experiences that are in correspondence with those initiations, then you're failing yourself. You're not going to get to your highest evolutionary potential because the physical process is what's necessary to getting to your highest psychic soul's potential. It's just as important as what you do astrally, just as important as what, as what you do energetically, the physical component, okay? It's all a part of the multiverse. And the process is to travel through the multiverse in all its different aspects, okay? So this is how I initiated myself. I went to the source of those multiversal interdimensional gatekeepers, uh, key holders, and I embraced them very seriously. I embrace them wanting their knowledge, wanting their power, wanting their understanding, and wanting their awareness to aid me in my spiritual soul's evolution. And I approach them over and over and over, different types of entities, all listening to my intuition and what I knew I needed to embrace. And I found myself opening doorways. I found myself receiving the key to open up certain aspects of my own being and within the multiverse itself to have real physical experiences that most human beings on the planet today are never going to have in their entire lifetime. Okay. I figured out the technology on how to open up the clipothic spheres the aspects of our own multiverse that are the darkest, most dense aspects, yet I found out how to get into those spheres. As I was saying, I found out how to enter into that aspect 
of the multiverse and then gain huge amounts of understanding, wisdom, knowledge, and power from that. And it was all intuition based and it was all wrapped around the intent of me taking this journey in this path very seriously. Okay. And then following up with what it was that I was intending physically. Okay. Which I think is one of the key components of what most people lack. A lot of people want to be spiritual and a lot of people want to be occult initiates. Yet when they find out that some of the deepest level occult initiations require them to do some of the most fearful things that they could ever think of, that's when most people turn their cheek and walk the other direction. I'm telling you, when when you get into the clipothic aspect of occult initiation, when you get into universe B and you start trying to evolve using that those levels of dark energy, you are going to come face to face with whatever it is for you personally. This is individualized. You will come face to face with your biggest fear, whatever that is. Okay, I don't know what it is for you. I knew what it was for me and I had to face that. And if you think you're going to go through this without coming face to face with those things, you might as well not even get started because when those things do show up, most likely if you're not prepared to deal with that or you're not at least uh, prepared to embrace it and process it properly, I promise you will lose your mind. You will turn yourself into a psychopath. You will start, you know, getting paranoid, thinking people are out to get you. You'll start getting overly self-important, thinking you're way more powerful than you actually are, which leads to you living a miserable lifestyle with nothing that you actually want, manifesting, yet you claim you're this powerful person when in reality it's all your ego speaking. You find yourself becoming a drug addict. All these bad things can manifest when you approach the darker side of spiritual self-development. And I'm not saying this to deter you from studying or embracing this process or this part of evolution. I'm just being honest in regards to what I experienced going into it and how I've seen people embrace it and literally lose themselves. I've seen people lose their souls in this process, meaning they sacrificed their intent to just allow themselves to stay shelved because when they got into it, it started really manifesting in regards to their unconscious and their subconscious started becoming physical in their real world, connected to the most feared, anxiety-filled, depression-based aspects of their own mind, of their own being, became physically manifest. And when those things take place, most people freeze. Most people freak out. It's like the worst thing you could imagine happening. What if that just happened? How are you going to process that? How are you going to embrace that? These are the types of things you will experience in clipothic initiation, in universe B initiation. But if you can process those circumstances and those situations, if you can be patient, trust the process and let that tension create pressure on your awareness, on your mind, on your energy field, you can turn that into a diamond simply by just embracing the experience simply by just allowing yourself to process it, feel the experience, be honest with yourself, okay? So once again, this is just a little bit of a side tangent, but this is what I went through. This is how I became a professional occultist. Now, if you study my occult channel, if you study Universal Mastery, scroll through my videos, you will see there are there are videos that I have not too long ago. If you scroll through down, down the uh, public videos, there's videos I have where I don't consider myself a professional occultist. I mean, if you scroll through my entire channel, you will see I have videos that are literally when I was initiating into the clipothic tree that I used to record. You will see how different I am as a person. You'll you'll see how different I behave, how different I act, how my thought process was different. There's people that message me sometimes. They're like, oh, your past videos are contradicting to your new ones. And I tell them, I say, yeah. And the reason why I still have it up on my YouTube channel is so that you can see in real time, if you go back to my older videos, how much this field has actually changed me, leading me up to where I am now. I'm a, I'm a physical embodiment of how real occult initiation 
in regards to the darker aspects of it can completely transform you in a beneficial way. Once again, I'm a living embodiment of it, okay? My life is continuing to evolve in a very profound manner that is beneficial, okay? And once again, the video was mainly intended about how did I get into initiation? You know, I got into it because I spoke to the source of these initiatory forces and I found the uh, the keys and the doorways to go through the process. And it's not as complicated as you think. It's a very intuitive, unconscious and subconscious process. And eventually I will be writing a book and 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 the key word is and, and releasing a video course on how to do this in regards to how I did it. And I'm going to share some of the most valuable tools, keys, and principles in regards to getting success in this field. Okay, so I'm going to leave it there. Ladies and gentlemen, if you enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up. Also, hit the notification bell because I post videos as often as I can. With content like this, you definitely don't want to miss out. Come down here and hit the subscribe button because if you are watching this video, if you have watched this long and you are not yet subscribed to my YouTube channel, then you might as well just subscribe. So go ahead and do that. Okay. Come down here. Add me on Instagram, J-E-R underscore 477. Um, if you have any family, friends, or social media platforms that are interested in this type of occult content or occult information, if you think they could get value from it, I promise you have my full permission to copy and paste the link of this video and send it to those people. Okay, you have my full permission. Okay, let's spread this content like wildfire because it builds up my empire. That's what I love to see. Okay. Now, if you want to gain access to a private Facebook community, come down in the drop down right here. Scroll down just a little bit and you're going to see there's a Facebook community post. Underneath of it is the link for the private Facebook group. So click the link. It'll take you to another link. Then you can request to join into the private Facebook group where most likely you will find yourself in a group of like-minded individuals. So if that's something you're interested in, request to join. Okay. Now, this is the most important link. This is the first link in the YouTube description, okay? It says Patreon. You cannot miss it. Now, obviously, this takes you to my Patreon. On my Patreon, I have an entire vault of exclusive occult content that is definitely not on my public YouTube channel for many different reasons. Very valuable content ranging all the way from live streams, very valuable information, tons of live streams, blog posts that talks about occult rituals, occult concepts, and gives you details on certain types of supernatural entities as well. All in blog post form, very valuable uh, information there. I have videos that teach about Kabbalah in regards to the Sephiroth and the Klipoth. Once again, very valuable. Then for tier three and up, you gain access to an entire magic training course, which basically teaches you the fundamental properties that you need to have to start developing psychic power in regards to what kind of tools you need and how to energetically link to them and then takes you through a very um, fundamental process of developing psychic powers starting with necromancy, angel magic, demon magic, and then casting a low magic spell, which I actually show video proof of on my Patreon of the spell that I cast and demonstrate for you and then show you the results once it's finished. Real life results, okay? all for tier three and up members. Then for tier four, this is the highest tier on my Patreon. Now, this is the most popular tier on my Patreon for many different reasons. Uh, this is called the Universe B Vampire Service. And on the 29th of every month that has a 29th, uh, I perform this service on the new participants that get it. And what I do for the service is I use my awareness of occult ritual and occult technologies and I transform the energy field of the participants of that service to be more universe B dominant, which basically means you allow yourself to be more receptive, therefore pulling energy in from chaos in your environment, which over time, the more you get used to this energetic process, the more you get used to being in universe B, you start developing huge amounts of power from consuming energy from chaos around you because the reality is the world is full of dark energy. It's full of chaos. The universe itself is 96% dark energy. So this is a very profound service. Once again, 
It is the most popular tier on my Patreon, Tier 4 Universe B Vampire. If you want to become a Universe B Vampire, look into the top tier. Okay, once again, the Patreon link is the first link in the YouTube description. I'm going to leave it there. I like to say this, ladies and gentlemen, for everyone who is subscribed to the Patreon, I want to give a special shout out to all of you. I highly appreciate all of you for taking your knowledge, your studies, and your practices specifically to that other side. Okay? Now, here is the second link I want to take your awareness to in the YouTube description. This is going to be where you can book your own tarot card reading with me. So what I can do in this tarot card reading is I can literally pinpoint exactly where you are on the Kabbalistic tree itself because I'm a professional occultist who understands the Kabbalistic tree. This is why I can do this. So I can tell you what you're experiencing in your present moment, what you're feeling, what you're going through, and then tell you what you're going to be experiencing in your near and long-term future. All based on the Kabbalistic tree, very powerful and profound reading. I've done over 250 readings. I get tons of great feedback and I'll leave it there. If that's something you're interested in, second link below, okay? Now, for the third link below, this is where you can become a YouTube member. As you become a YouTube member, you gain access to an exclusive emoji system where you can use emojis that I've personally designed myself to cause psychic damage to a target, okay? So once again, I specifically intentionally designed these emojis to be used in a way where when you put them in a certain configuration, it can literally cause psychic damage to a target. So you link in the name of the target and then it can cause psychic damage. Now the emojis are based on my tarot deck. They're based on the Fibonacci sequence and they tap into the metaverse because it's all ran through the emoji system. So the more the metaverse grows, the more powerful the system works. The system's already powerful in general. The more people using the system, the more powerful it becomes as well. There's already a ton of people using it as we speak. Tons of people are getting results from it as we speak. So if you would like to take advantage of it and literally tap into the most simple form of psychic warfare, literally can take you five seconds once you, once you get used to it, look into the third link in the YouTube description and become a YouTube member. Other than that, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to wrap it up here. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of the day or night, wherever you are, and I'll see you on the next video. Peace.